Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. More Valentine cards. This time using Simon Says Stamps Heart to Heart background stamp. And I have my Misty stamping tool here and I've taken out the foam insert because this is a red rubber on cling foam stamp. So you need the insert out of there to be able to stamp with it. And I've got the stamp lined up in the lid and then I'm lining up a piece of black cardstock on the stamp first. And then I'm putting just a little bit of repositionable adhesive on the back of the cardstock and then bringing the base to the lid, doing it backwards basically. This works especially well when you're trying to center cardstock on a background stamp that has like a center image or just is designed in such a way that you want to center something. It kind of works nicely this way. It it kind of mixes both the best of both worlds. Like I've shown using background stamps like face up on my desk and then I just line up the cardstock, you know, rub my fingers over it, etc. Or I use it like this. The bonus of doing it this way is you can restamp it more than once if you need to because everything's lined up. Having that um, adhesive on the back of the cardstock keeps it in place so you can restamp your image. So any method can work. This is one of the most foolproof <laughs> and I wanted to be able to stamp this perfectly because I'm planning on using this entire piece. This cardstock is about five and a half inches square roughly and I'm going to make an A2 card front out of it but I wanted some left over for the inside so that's why I went a little bit extra getting the like stamping everything lined up so that none of the cardstock has unstamped areas if that makes sense. Really, I couldn't just cut a larger piece of cardstock, but sometimes I like to make things difficult for myself, but it's always good to know. So I'm gonna do this process twice. I'm gonna line up another piece of cardstock, use the repositionable adhesive, close my Misty backwards, and then I'm gonna use the anti-static powder tool. I'm inking up the stamp with clear embossing ink. The first time I used Simon's gold embossing powder, and then this time I'm going to use white embossing powder. And while I'm editing all of this, I honestly, you could have just left it as is. It looks really good. Just the black and gold looks great. And then the black and white looks really great too. Like you wouldn't even need to do the metallic watercoloring. But the whole point of this was I wanted to see what the metallic watercoloring would look like. So in a perfect world, if I had all the time in the world, I would do even more. You know, just leave two as is and finish the cards. And then some with metallic watercoloring. And then some with other things, because of course my mind is going and like other products I could use to color them in, all that stuff. But I heat emboss both because my original plan was to use, of course, the golds on the first one. But then I was like, ooh, I have the gem color metallic. So I'll get to those in a second. So the first one, I'm using the Gonsai Tombi Sari colors that I have used in a bunch of videos. And this is just black cardstock. This is not watercolor paper. I've never had a problem with this though. It, it, this is a very heavy weight um, water, or cardstock, so it can handle um, me doing this, but I'm also not adding a ton of water and I'm also not, you know, doing any washes or adding a lot of water or, you know, going over everything multiple times. I'm pretty much just painting it on and it's done. So it will warp a bit. Again, if I cut my cardstock larger, I could have taped it down, but in the end, it doesn't really matter because once I kind of flatten everything out and you know place it under a couple heavy things after I adhere it to the card base, it'll be fine. So I'm just painting everything on. I sprayed the watercolors first. These, any, really any metallic watercolor, it does need to be mixed up because once they start getting wet, the, the shimmer and the pigment wants to settle and not be in the top. So you always want to spray these first and then you know, I don't just dip my brush into them. I kind of swirl my brush in the watercolors to pick up that shimmer, to pick up that color and whatnot. And then I'm just painting. I'm just using one of my Zen watercolor brushes. This is a large one. This is like a size eight, I think. And painting all over these um, hearts. Some of them I'm layering, some of them I'm not. I'm kind of just doing my thing. On camera, as always, these ones, especially over black, don't look the greatest. Um, it's weird how the camera kind of picks up the reflect and it just looks weird. Whereas these ones, it doesn't quite do that. So these are the gem colors, same idea, just in colors. With these, I had to be a little more careful and a little more aware of where I was placing the colors. Whereas with the golds, I was just picking them up. I wasn't even cleaning my brush off between the colors with the, the starry colors because they're all shades of gold. 
Whereas this, I've got rainbow colors and I don't want to end up layering like red over green, vice versa. Um, because you could end up with some really muddy looking mess. Um, so I was a little more careful. I wasn't layering quite as much. And the funny thing is I was really looking forward to the gold one, but I absolutely loved how this one turned out. Just how these look on black and these hearts and the colors and everything. I just, this was a lot of fun. And now I kind of want to do more with these colors. Like there's rainbow colors on black. Like why not? So I did the same thing though. I just went along and just started filling them in. No rhyme or reason really. Just keeping certain colors kind of away from each other. Mostly the like red and green because those make brown and that's not pretty. So at least not when you're wanting to do rainbow colors. So I filled everything in on these. I did it on both. I didn't leave any of the like open areas black. I could have, um, but I wanted it all filled in. I wanted just solid color on all these pieces. So these dry really, really quickly. Like I said, I'm not using a ton of water or anything like that, but these generally dry quite quickly. So there's not um, a lag in time like there is with other coloring mediums at times. But I set both of those aside, pulled out my Misti again. This time the foam insert is in the Misti because I'm going to stamp with clear stamps. And I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Love and Valentine's Word Mix 2 stamp set. And black cardstock, line up my stamp. I'm going to stamp this with clear embossing ink. And I'm actually going to stamp it a couple times because this is a brand new stamp. It hasn't been used. So I want to make sure I ink it up really well because there's a lot of solid sentiment stamps in this set as well. So same process. I use my anti-static powder tool and then I sweep off the excess with my big tonic um, brush, the big fan brush. I do link to this. Yeah, I have it linked in the slides. So every time I forget to link to that one thing, that's what I get the questions about. But I remembered. This brush is huge and I, I love it. I love it to wipe away, you know, the excess powder of anything. So inked up the stamp twice with the clear embossing ink, making sure everything is very lined up because you definitely don't want to, you know, miss stamping with sentiments, you know, just slightly off because then that's not going to work. So stamped it with the clear embossing ink and this first stamp I'm going to coat with the gold embossing powder. This set is two, it's a big set, it's a six by eight stamp set, but there's technically only two stamps in the set. Beauty of it being is you get a whole selection of sentiments that you only need to stamp once and then you can die cut with the coordinating wafer dies. Um, I talked about this in the release and review video I did on the release that this was part of from a couple weeks ago. My video is only like a week old, something like that. Anyway, um, you could cut these stamps apart if you wanted to and not have the wafer dies, but the beauty of it is the convenience. So I heat embossed the first stamp in this set with the gold and then I inked up the second stamp doing the exact same thing, stamping it on black cardstock, stamping it a couple times with the clear embossing ink. And then this one I'm going to heat emboss with the white embossing powder. So obviously way more sentiments than I'm going to need. I'm just going to save the extras. I do that with the Word Mix 1 sets that are smaller, that have the coordinating wafer dies that again I've shown in other videos. So you just line up the coordinating wafer die. So this is the Word Mix 2 wafer die and the whole beauty of all this too is that I assume Simon is going to come out with more sets in like upcoming releases. I'm really hoping for another thank you set, but in this size, like the larger one, I just, I like having the options. So anyway, lined up the coordinating wafer die, taped it into place with some purple tape, and then I'm going to run this through my die cut machine. So then I've got this one all die cut, and then I'm just going to repeat the process for the ones I did with the uh, white embossing powder. They're all meant to line up with this one set, like this one wafer die. So that's kind of the beauty of it too, is you just, you don't have to sit and fiddle with multiple dies. It's just do it once. Stamp it once, die cut it once, end up with multiples. So with all my extras, since I'm only doing two cards, even though I'm going to use multiple sentiments on both um, cards, all the extras, I just set them aside in a little dish. I have some of my thank you uh, sentiments and whatnot from previous cards that I didn't end up using. And I just keep them off to the side on my desk. And when I need a sentiment, I can just kind of rifle through that, pull out the ones I need, and good to go. So I'd figured out what sentiments I wanted to use, set aside the extras. 
And then all I need to do now is assemble my cards. So both my cards are top folding, heavyweight white cardstock, just standard A2 size. And both card fronts from those metallic heart watercolors that I did, I cut them down to slightly smaller than A2 size so that the card base will kind of frame both of these. And with both of these, I adhered the card fronts and then I actually just put them under like a couple heavy books since they were, like I said, warped. And that way they adhered really, really well, flattened them out a little bit. And then the sentiments, I'm just popping on with a little bit of Simon's Big Mama foam tape. And then on the inside of the cards, I cut down the remaining little bit I had left over from the card fronts of the metallic watercolor. So I've got a nice little like kind of strip of that to put on the inside of the card along with a couple more of the die cut and heat emboss sentiments. So added those to the inside of both cards using my craft tacky adhesive, trimming off the excess on the one, just making sure to kind of line up anytime I'm adding anything to the inside of a card. I kind of fold up the card front a little bit because you don't want to glue anything over the spine because then your card's not going to fold like close properly. So I always like butt it up right against kind of the spine there and it's good to go. So got all my sentiments adhered. As always, you could leave it here, but I wanted to add a little bit more bling. So I went through my stash and I pulled out, I have uh, the little things from Lucy's cards. These are the rainbow sparkle mix jewels. I have the sparkle mix and then I have the chunky sparkle mix, which is just the big kind of jewels. So I adhered those to the rainbow card and then to the gold card, I'm using pretty pink posh, pearl white, metallic gold and metallic rose gold crystals. And I'll have these linked with the supplies and adhered those into place and that finished off both of these cards. So I did turn the flash on to kind of show like that just metallic shine that both of these cards have. So I hope you guys enjoyed these. As always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I will have a supply list with links to all the supplies I used. That'll be in the description box below as well as on my blog post, which is always the first link directly below my video. And that will take you directly to the blog post. So you don't have to search for anything. So if you're interested in any of that, you can check it out below. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.